everyone. This is Julia with episode number 56 of the Mixology Talk podcast. Bartending is a dangerous job, and I'm not even talking about the raucous customers or violent drunk people. Bartending itself can actually be really hard on your body. This week, we're talking about some of the lesser known occupational hazards of bartending and some things to look out for to try to keep an eye on your health. Let's get into it. So I think when most people think about bartending injuries, they probably think of, you know, getting attacked by customers. But I would imagine the most common injury on the job is probably cutting yourself, right? Yeah, there are so many opportunities to cut yourself behind the bar. Opportunities? Opportunities. And uh, (laughs) let's just be careful with those opportunities. But yeah, there are so many different ways of cutting yourself, whether you're using fresh citrus and you're cutting to order, or if you're garnishing, you know, um, even the glassware that you handle on a minute by minute basis you must have breakage all the time all the time and even if you use uh, glass uh, pint glasses and to shake your cocktails mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time until one of those breaks in, in your hand well i don't know about you but you know those foil wrappers around the top of some of some wine bottles oh yeah you cut yourself on oh those my, all those the time are mean that yeah. is the worst cut i tell it's like the the bar equivalent of a paper cut oh uh, and for all of you that aren't uh, bartenders there is something very very about those cuts plus lemon juice which you use with all the time and it's like a constant thing over your entire shift yeah it's one of those unforeseen things of you wouldn't know until you're in the business that is bad yeah so let's say you end up in a situation where you cut yourself now first of all obviously you need to deal with yourself you need to cover up your injury stop the blood do whatever you have to do for yourself but then you need to deal with the sanitary conditions for the customers right yeah no absolutely you know um if you cut yourself behind a bar the first thing to do is just make sure you're not bleeding everywhere i think that's just common sense yeah then make sure that you know you're not bleeding so you want to you want to seal up that wound as, as fast as you possibly can and kind of get back into service Making sure that if you're possible. not contaminating anything every time you touch it. Right. So what, you grab a bar towel? You know, just get yourself off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fall on the floor during no, the process? No, the floor is a <laughs> technical term of like in front of customers. Not even technical, just jargon, I guess. To get yourself away from customers as soon as possible to address the wound. Julia, you'll remember this. I always had an emergency kit in my bag. Um, that consisted of crazy glue, yep. band-aids, yep. and various other things in there. Um, but all you ever used was the crazy glue and band-aids. And usually I didn't And finger use, condoms. And finger condoms, mm-hmm. yeah, those are usually it. Um, but yeah, I would have that in a little uh, Altoids tin yep. that I would carry behind the bar pretty it, much every shift. It makes your injuries minty fresh. <laughs> it's so delightful. <laughs> so you cut yourself for whatever reason. You need to obviously... Stop the bleeding. Get yourself out of view of the customers. Let somebody else know so they can clean up mm-hmm. if necessary. Or, you know, if a glass is broken, um, get the contaminated stuff off the floor, in the garbage, out of service. But then you have to deal with yourself and you have to deal with your customers, right? So somebody has to take over if you're not going back to your shift. What, what do you do? Do you tell your manager? Do you run up the door screaming? Yeah. I mean, the first thing to do is just assess how bad the cut is and then definitely get other people involved you know if you're fortunate to be working with a couple different bartenders then i think obviously they're going to figure it out pretty quick Mm -hmm. communicating what needs to communicate like is there glass in your ice well right they can't use your well do not use that um so one of the tricks i've learned over the years is that if you are in an emergency situation you break glass and you have to get off the floor once again that jargon uh once and to get away from people and you are not sure there's ice in your well Grab a thing of tomato juice and just spray it inside of your ice. Oh, interesting. That is, it's like a universal it. symbol of don't use this. It's not a, I don't know if it's a universal symbol, but it is a clear <laughs> well, defining moment like of saying don't use this well. <laughs> they can't. There's no way you can use a well with tomato juice in it. Right, exactly. So then either way, the bar pack is going to have to take that ice out and replenish right. it anyways. So that would be another option if you just really hate your bar back. Oh yeah, you don't want to do that. Trust me. Your bar back is your life <laughs> support kidding. system behind I'm a kidding. bar. I'm kidding. I love <laughs> bar backs. Seriously, don't do that. That would be so mean. Um, but I think the point here is if if you are running out the door, that's 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 a possible option to signal when you don't have the chance to tell someone. Right. And it, just as long as everybody understands what that means. Right. You know, then You're not just being a jerk. It's not it's a nonverbal communication yeah. of saying I'm in trouble burn this ice i'll be back as soon as i can 
So knowing the demographic of bartenders, I would assume there's a lot of folks who don't go to the ER when they need to, but sometimes it's pretty obvious you got to go. I have one story that will be very, very vivid for Chris. A little pro tip. If you bring a piece of your body into the ER and ask them where to put it while you're waiting for help, you get help really quickly. Yeah, we should have mentioned this in the beginning that this is going to be, this could <laughs> potentially be a little bit more graphic, but I think it's just in this one uh, particular it was just scenario. just a tiny part of your finger. But yeah, so. Important, but tiny. And looking back on it, it cracks me up that I did this because uh, for whatever reason, um, so the, the backstory is that uh, I was cutting cucumber with a mandolin. And I was in a hurry because I was, you know, pressed for time, setting the bar up. All bad. And I took a significant layer of my top knuckle off. Um, it was a biology lesson. It was, it was bad. Yeah. It, you, you saw a lot of things you shouldn't see. <laughs> um, but my first reaction was obviously get off the floor, tell a manager. We didn't have any customers at the point, at that moment. It was before service, right? And I did the things you're supposed to do in, that, in my mind anyways at that moment. You know, put your finger around it with a, a napkin, put it over your head. Walk up to the manager and kind of get the blood flowing to stop. You know, blood flow to stop happened. Back to the bar, found the rest of your finger. The, yes. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, oh, yeah, when you lose teeth in like an accident, they say to put it in a thing of milk. I feel like I've heard that too, but I have no <laughs> idea. How, did you put it in milk? I put it in milk. And then I walked through Financial District in San Francisco with my bloody finger over my head and a little container of milk with the rest of my finger Oh, my in it. gosh. Just... Needless to say, <laughs> when he walked in the door and asked them where he should put his chunk O finger... I got they, uh, escorted quickly to the back of yes, the emergency room. Yes, you were immediately was, yeah. brought to the front of the list, I think. <laughs> and I think my doctor said, what the hell were you thinking? Why did you put it in a glass of milk? <laughs> yeah, don't take... Uh, I should have started with a, a disclaimer here. Don't take any medical advice from this episode. Oh, God, no. no Especially not the milk thing. I'm oh. pretty sure that doesn't help you. Oh, so funny, though. <laughs> Funny after. Right, after the fact. After the fact, yes, exactly. So the moral of the story is you do need to take care of yourself. That's really important. If you have to go to the ER, go to the ER. But you also need to make sure somebody's taking care of your customers. It's extremely important that you keep the bar sanitary. It's extremely important that you don't freak anyone out, too. Yeah, Although that's exactly. a little bit of a less priority, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. So to wrap it up, there are many opportunities to opportunities. <laughs> cut yourself behind a bar. Just please don't take any of them. Take as few as possible. Yeah, exactly. So to move on to the lesser known occupational hazards, I think obviously cutting yourself is probably pretty well known. But there's some other things that can definitely happen to you as a bartender if you've been in the trade for a while. And I've seen a lot of these secondhand from Chris. And the first one that I'd like to bring up is probably the worst that you've had to deal with, Chris, and that is tennis elbow. Yeah, I will absolutely agree with you. Once you, once it starts to set in, it's Almost it's impossible to get rid of. And it's not playing tennis. No, and I don't tend bar anymore, but I still have that injury, and it kind of flares up every once in a while. So there's actually two different injuries that can be confused for each other. The first one is tennis elbow, and the other one is golfer's elbow. Really? And my understanding is that they affect different parts of the elbow. So the exterior is tennis, and the interior of your elbow is golfer's elbow. Are both caused by shaking? I've only known people, bartenders, that have suffered from tennis elbow. That's what I've heard mainly is right. the tennis elbow problem. That is definitely um, the one I have experience with. So when you have tennis elbow, one of the big reasons is just the shaking that's mm -hmm. involved. It's a repetitive motion injury. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, it's called tennis elbow because people who play a lot of tennis get a repetitive motion injury it's it's bad for your body to do the same motion in the same way over and over and over again and I, I don't think there's a better example of that than shaking a cocktail as a bartender no and i just recently talked to uh one of my friends that him and i were kind of going through tennis elbow together at the same time sounds weird um <laughs> but he was tennis elbow buddies he had cortisone shots about the same time i had cortisone shots and uh we were kind of comparing it and he said you know that first time you get a cortisone shot as a remedy to tennis elbow it mm -hmm. lasts about six months um, and I just saw him recently, and he said that uh, his second round, it lasted about a month. That's terrifying. Yeah. So. I think, it, I don't know, it is so important to pay attention to your body. I think, so what's the first thing you noticed when you when you started to notice this problem before you thought it was a big deal? Yeah, so what just you'll soreness? notice is right below your joint in your elbow, uh, as you approach closer to your hand on the outside. So imagine where the bend in your elbow is. It happens just a little bit below that, closer to your hand. And imagine just little tiny tears 
all the time and just always irritated, always inflamed. Like um, just a soreness. Very sore. Feels like a painful. Sprain. Um, and when it hit me the worst, couldn't actually use my hands very well, reaching across a bar to pick up plates, yeah. to grab uh, bottles, to grab glassware. I had to I had open no, jars for you. Yeah, I had no strength in my hand. So it really affects you much more so than you would imagine it would. And, you know, being a bartender or guy in general, I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's not that bad. It just gets worse, it gets worse and worse and worse. It's terrible, especially with the really dense ice that we're using behind craft bars these days. Mm -hmm. It really aggravates it's that, heavier. All of that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that's such a good point. And with, with any repetitive motion injury, obviously I'm not a doctor, but it, it's important to be proactive. You know, try to vary your motions. I know it's it's hard to do when you're shaking a cocktail. There's only so many ways you can shake a cocktail, but vary your motions, stretch before your shift. I that know did that a you, lot for me. You said that helped a lot. And do this, don't wait until you can't open a jar of jam anymore. Do this <laughs> at the beginning. Do this before you feel the pain. You know, stretch before your shift. You your body is your asset as a bartender. And if you can't use it anymore, then you're out of luck. Yeah. So that would definitely be one of my biggest recommendations is just stretch that tendon out as much as you possibly can before your shift and also strengthen all the muscles around it. Mm -hmm. So going to the gym, working out will definitely help. And, and actually, I also... Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look up a couple videos if I can find them for stretches for tennis elbow. We'll, th we'll throw those in the show notes. That might be helpful too. Yeah, for sure. And this is definitely going to come in handy as we approach, you know, the busy season during the holidays and stuff. Absolutely. And the other thing that really helped me out was an arm brace. It's one in particular that kind of put a lot of pressure right on the tendon. And the idea here is that it really immobilizes tendon from opening up again uh. so it puts pressure down below it so that way you create a new kind of mm -hmm. pivot point for that tendon um, so we'll put a link to that particular wrap in the uh, show notes but that with stretching and mm -hmm. just working out did wonders for uh, for helping that with that right and and the trouble is when you, when you go and you do the research on tennis elbow um, what everybody says is take breaks you know, don't play as much tennis. Take breaks in between rounds. You just don't have that opportunity as a bar. It's a when little bit of a joke. When your livelihood is completely fixed with you right. know, your ability to show behind a bar. When you're you 10 people deep, it. you're not going to be like, hold on, folks. I need to stretch for a little while. Like, right. come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, stretch before and after a busy shift because and, you're going to need it. And if it hurts, I know it sucks. And for folks who live in the USA, you may not have health care coverage. But if it hurts, you've got to see a doctor. It's just going to get worse. It, yeah. it got worse until you saw a doctor. Chris. Yeah, I went through uh, physical therapy for it, and um, I could not recommend it more. You know, if yeah. you're going through this, you definitely should seek some professional help. And I, I know a couple other people that have gone and seen people that put needles in you. I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> put needles in you? <laughs> not, yeah, the um, acupuncture. acupuncture? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So yeah, that scary nurse I had as a kid. Well, and you could take this a whole bunch of different ways, but uh, yeah, no, the acupuncturist um, that used acupuncture as a remedy as well. Really? Yeah, and a lot of different arguments about it. About uh, one of the doctors I was talking to said that there's a new theory that if you injure it even more, then your body repairs it faster. Hmm. Which uh, that just sounds counterintuitive <laughs> to me. Sounds painful. <laughs> right? So, uh, but yeah, definitely seek professional help. Yeah, because we're not doctors. Right. Yeah. So kind of along the same lines as the tennis elbow is issues with the wrist. It doesn't have a fancy name like tennis elbow as far as I know. But when you're picking up bottles out of the well and twisting your wrist around to pour, which you're going to have to do several times per cocktail, that adds up. Again, it's a it's a repetitive motion. Your wrist is obviously where carpal tunnel will hit, will get you. It's where all these other injuries can happen. And so this is another injury that is very, very common. Yeah, I remember when I first started tending bar that this hit me pretty early on. I'd say in the first year, uh, my wrist got super worn out just from repetitive motion of the wrist and turning bottles. It's a weird motion. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have those muscles for any other occupation, right? So um, you know, just try to limit the amount of twisting that you're doing at the wrist. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I actually had to figure out how I was pouring now because I haven't had that problem like eight years afterwards or 10 years afterwards. Well, you uh, told me you had a name for it. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even coin this until like earlier before when I was trying to demonstrate how I do a, a pour now, but I call it the chicken wing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, the theory is sound instead of twisting your wrist, you're moving your whole arm. It looks right. a little bit dorky, but honestly, I've never noticed it looking dorky behind the bar. No. But the key is you're, you're rotating your, you're moving your wrist a lot less, right. which is reducing the risk. 
Yeah. So imagine if you keep your wrist straight and then you just raise your elbow up past your shoulder right. and point your wrist down. So that that's the chicken wing because it looks like a chicken wing. And just be careful of the bar back coming in to refill your, your spirits or your ice or Speaking the bartender injuries, next to you. Yeah, right. clocking the guy next to you is not going to help the situation. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. So while I was researching the sort of carpal tunnel pot problem for bartenders, I came across an interesting Reddit th- thread where somebody mentioned that they their doctor had recommended to them something called a pro gyro exerciser now i'd never heard of this before it looks like a ball and there's got like it it has like a gyro weight inside of it so it it is just so weird and i looked up a video on how you use it and it was like i can't even describe to you how awkward this video was i'll include it in the show notes it's hilarious yay awkward youtube videos (laughs) it It can't be worse than the uh the shake weight when that first it was came actually out. kind of similar, except that the actor has like an eighth grader's mustache and a gigantic burly body and a tiny head. Nice. It's amazing. It's and amazing. A, and an awkward gyroscopic ball. Exactly. In his hand. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a bad video at all. It's terrible. Anyway, take a look at the video. Take a look at this gyros- this Dynaflex Pro Gyro Exerciser, which is a terrible name. This person on Reddit said it helped them a lot. It really helped with their wrist problems because it helped them build up the muscles. So if, if anybody says it helps, I say it's worth a try. It's like 13 bucks or something. Sure. So there you go. Um, like I said, I don't have personal experience with it. Enjoy the video. So that'll be mixologytalk.com slash 56. Holy cow, 56? I know. Oh my Crazy. goodness. So I think the last injury that I want to mention is something that I don't, I don't think I ever would have thought of. I mean, bars are really noisy places, not just because of the music, which is probably pretty common, but also the shouting and you have to yell over people to get orders and something else that I wouldn't have thought of, which is the fact that you're shaking cocktails right next to your ear. Yeah. And that ice on ice and ice on tin is just... And glass. It's loud. I mean... So, you know, most of the time you shake right next to, to, I'm right-handed, so I shake right next to my right ear. And uh, there's a couple different problems that I have. First of all, I was a dealer in Vegas for a long time, and the constant noise in one ear or the other, I think, definitely helped with my hearing loss. But I think that shaking cocktails right next to my right ear, I notice a huge difference in my ability to hear on my right or left ear. So, you know, there are a couple different ways to kind of that. Yeah, to kind of get around that, um, one of my friends showed me what was called the European uh, shake, and it's basically you're dropping, you're dropping your shake closer to your waist level and not above your it's ear. It's like more of a piston shake, right? right. Like forward, back, forward, back exactly. instead of up, down, up, mm-hmm. down. And it will take some getting used to. Um, it's a little awkward looking. I'm it sorry. is a bit awkward looking. I'll say it right now. <laughs> but it, it does two things. It helps with minimizing the hearing loss. And it also um, actually changes the force on your elbow. So yeah, it can so help with tennis a, elbow as well. Might be a twofer. Right. So uh, so that may, they, that may help long term if you plan on being a bartender for a while. And also switching hands, right? I mean, I think always shaking on one. Maybe that just means you have hearing loss in both ears. Maybe that's not better. Right, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and most of, you know, if you're in a busy bar, you're probably shaking two handed anyways. True. And there are different techniques for getting that the, the shakers down below your chest level. So that way, you know, you, you can uh, minimize the hearing loss. Yeah. I'll see if I can find a video for that, too, and throw that in the show notes just so in case our uh, description was not too helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Very likely. Very likely. And one last thing, uh, if you're working in a nightclub situation, who knows, there may be speakers right above your head. And if you have the opportunity to move, if you have the opportunity to ask management to move the speakers, take it. I, yeah. I mean, you may not, but if you can, it's worth it's worth it for your hearing. Yeah, or even putting in, um, um, yeah, would definitely help as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, provided, of course, you can still hear your customers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then one of the other things that I'll, I'll definitely speak to is just if you're in a business long enough, you're bending over a well daily. You know, every time you go down to scoop up ice, you're just putting a lot of pressure on your back and on your knees. And if you're taller, this might actually be a lot worse for you. So definitely you want to take care of yourself. You want to, you know, use proper technique and work out. Going to the gym yeah. will keep you in the game a lot longer. Yeah, because the problem is is working behind the bar, you're lifting heavy things. You're lifting dish racks. You're right. lifting kegs. You're lifting ice. And if you lift it poorly, you're going to have the same problem that anybody else lifting poorly does. Yeah, and you may even consider, uh, I know there's quite a few bartenders that uh, do yoga, 
really? for both strengthening and stretching. So this may be something to look for uh, as well is try that out, see what works for you. And honestly, you know, I would love to hear other people's feedback as far as some of the repetitive motion in- injuries that you've had behind the bar and how you're kind of dealing with that. And, you know, some of the uh, techniques that you do before your shift to kind of prepare yourself physically going to work. Absolutely. Definitely. And if you need a back brace, get a back brace. I think I, you made, you made the best point earlier, which is go to the gym, build up your core strength. I think as, as a whole, that's going to help across the board. But if you can't do that, if you're, if you're hurting yourself, you know, lift correctly. And if you need a back brace and you're lifting kegs and super heavy stuff, it's worth it. Yeah. So I didn't mean this to turn into a old man complaining about it totally bar. sounds like I know, it, doesn't right? it? Oh, my injuries. But it's funny, like <laughs> when you talk to other bartenders that have been in, you know, for a while and it's kind of like those compare the battle wounds kind of scenario. Yeah, it's going to happen to you after a while. So, you know, take care of yourself in the beginning and it's going to pay off a lot. in the end. It is a physical job, just like any other physical job. And you need to take care of your body because your body is frankly the only way you can do the job. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So definitely. Tenders, take care of yourself out there and try to catch these repetitive motion injuries before they become a really, really big problem. Definitely check out the show notes at mixologytalk.com slash 56 for all those links we mentioned for the awkward gyro video. And most importantly, to let us know about your own experiences. Have you had any of these repetitive motion injuries and how have you dealt with them? Some of them are really tricky to get rid of once they start. And so all advice would be super, super appreciated. Once again, that's mixologytalk.com slash 56. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.